All right. Well, I think we will go ahead and get started here. I want to take a moment and uh, thank everybody for being on this webinar. I'm really excited about the Maxim LiftMaster product line. They've uh, done a lot of really good stuff. Um, listen to the voice of customer and their designs. There's been a lot of engineering that's gone into it. And so I just want to say thank you for taking the next 45, 50 minutes of your busy day to spend some time with Control Products, uh, myself, and get some good information on Maxim. So a little bit about myself. My name is Louis Guido. I am the Business Manager for Residential and Commercial Door Products for CP. I've uh, been with the company since uh, 2016. And in that time, uh, I've gotten to meet a lot of you that are on this call. And I uh, hope in this role, I'll be able to meet even more of you. So uh, I'll go over a little bit about what we're going to be covering today and where we're headed. And uh, and then also leave you uh, with some uh, some. Uh, resources at the end of it that should be really beneficial as you transition your company, your technicians to the new Maxim commercial door operator line. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and get started. Again, I am uh, I'm super excited about everything here, and you know I want to go over some of the old old pain points that the Logic Five, Logic Four, Logic Three all had with it, what Maxim is doing to create a solution, what they've done to listen to the, the voice of customer and uh, integrate those requests, those feature sets, those issues that they may have been uh, occurring, whether it's for the dealer or the end user and really coming up with a strong, solid platform. So, you know, one of the things, if anybody on this call has installed a uh, commercial door operator that is a, uh, you know, AC or the, the standard stuff that we're seeing right now, you know that thing is heavy. It's awkward. Uh, it, typically, it's going to require two technicians to install. You're going to need a scissor, scissor lift every time that you have to roll trucks if it's a vertical lift. You know, and, the, and these things cost a, a good amount of money. They um, they're they're hard on your back. They're they're hard on the the installer. And so the the Maxim solution on the J model, the JDC and the JHDC model, they they've already uh, they've taken about 20 pounds worth of uh, weight out of it, made it slimmer. There's a much better center of gravity so that when you're actually mounting it up on the wall, you are able to, uh, you know, get it done without having to tweak your back. And then the next thing is the new wall control. Uh, I'll go over both of those in a lot more detail because there's some feature sets in them that uh, deserve their own uh, their own spotlight. But really what it boils down to is in a lot of cases, you're only going to need one technician now in order to install a maximum commercial door operator. Uh, the other thing is once it's installed, you really don't need to get the ladder out unless there's something going on up at the top of the door, up at the torsion line. Everything is going to be done from the new wall control. Uh, the other thing that was, uh, you know, a big headache and a lot of uh, uh, pain points was on how the monitored entrapment stuff work with the LE LMEP terminals, right? If you wanted to add an extra eye, if you wanted to have a monitored edge, if you wanted to have the optical edge sensor or a light curtain or something, you had to add a CPS-3 card, you had to add a CPS-EI card, you had to add, you know, all these things that just made the installation a heck of a lot more confusing. You had to run, make multiple trips to the distributor or and, and get the actual parts that you needed. Um, and so, you know, now there is three monitored entrapment protection devices standard uh, on the control board. And there's also a one amp available of 24 volt DC. So you can run light curtains, you can run all that kind of good stuff. Um, it's easy to manage, not as many accessories to stock, uh, leave off the bid. You know that if you have two cards on your install truck, you know that you're going to be able to hook just about anything up to one of these Maxim operators. Uh, the next thing is uh, the feature set of battery backup capable. Okay, you know there's a there's a couple operators out there that have it um, other than fire door operators that have some battery backup in it. But the way that LiftMaster is really looking at doing this, it's a very easy add-on accessory for the TDC and the JHDC, um, and it, it enables uh, the extra runtime during town power. The other thing is in new construction, how many times were you lugging around uh, the Honda generator or whatnot? Are running, you know, 200 foot cords trying to get an operator to power up and set limits just so that you can commission the door. Uh, now you just have to, you know, you can take a battery, whether it's uh, installed and left on site or maybe just as a service uh, tool for the technician. 
and it uh, you know adds that flexibility of not having to require two trips to new construction. You know, LiftMaster has done a really good thing in connecting everybody to to Wi-Fi, this Internet of Things, the way that the industry is moving, both for access and, and doors as well, is having Wi-Fi, having the app, having that, you know, clarity of diagnostics, all this stuff that they're doing. Well, now you don't have to worry about gateways or the A28LM or adding any of these additional hardwares or what's the, the distance or the number of units to connect. Now the Wi-Fi chip is standard and included it on all Maxim units. Um, you're going to be able to get over the air updates. You're going to be able to connect to the MyQ facility diagnostics as well as access. So, you know, there's a lot of beach features and benefits that come along with that Wi-Fi. Um, I'll mention it again, but in 2024, any Maxim operator that is connected will get three free months worth of um, of the, the MyQ facility. And so I really encourage you to, to get these connected to the internet, make sure that you go through these updates and, and get it going. Uh, we'll go and go on to the next one. I want to show, or the next slide will show some of the, the new hardware features. Um, what I talked about with the center of gravity, you can see where you have the purple, um, the, uh, the purple dot in front of the, um, right here in the operators. If you've ever listed or lifted one of these operators up out of a box or put it on a wall, you know that thing wants to come back down on top of you. So they really thought about the installer perspective and realizing that if they make it slimmer, if they reduce the weight and you can get it tucked against the wall or the barrel, you're going to have a much easier time installing it. The other thing that I want to show here is this e-box on the trolley, the TDC. You can actually flip it to the other side. Notice one, the thing that you should notice first is that you're not looking straight up. You don't have dust. You don't have screws. You don't have wire, you know, all that kind of stuff falling into your face when you open up the cover. Um, it's on to the side. You can put your, to the, your ladder to the side. You're, you don't have to worry about the draw bar or the, uh, the J arm or anything like that hitting you in the face anymore. And, and you can, you know, really service the operator while it's running, while it's doing all that kind of stuff. Um, you can move it to the other side in case you've got a beam or a truss or something like that in the way, which is really nice. Um, so on all of the operator covers, uh, they have captive e-box screws, which basically means that once you, you know, you loosen up the screw, um, it's not going to fall out of the cover. You know, how many times on a Friday at five o'clock have you dropped a screw and you're, you're hunting for it in some warehouse and, you know, you're trying to figure out, or if you have a, you know, right now you've probably got a bin in the service truck that has a bunch of these screws sitting in it. You don't have to worry about that anymore. The cover, um, the lid to the cover itself is completely removable if you wish to do so. So let's say you, you wanted to, for whatever reason, you can remove it. Um, once you're in the cover, pretty much no tools are going to be needed. Everything is using uh, push style terminals uh, with locking tabs on them. Um, I'll show some close-up pictures here in a little bit, but know that once you get in there and you strip the wires to the proper length, stab them in there, push it, and they're, they're very vibration resistant. They're going to hold tight. Uh, they've been tested and, and they really do work very well. One of the things that they did keep from the innovation of the Logic 5 is being able to have multi-voltage selection. So 120 or 240 VAC is just done with the plug, just like um, on the, the Logic 5s. No standard tool or only standard tools are required. Um, you notice on the, the JDC and J model, there's no more castle nut of having to set clutches and all that kind of stuff. And so, you know, most of the tools you're going to need is just a typical sock, socket set, your hammer drill, that kind of stuff. But, you know, once you're into the box, you're not going to need anything special. All right. The box is plastic. It's hard plastic. It's ABS plastic. It's good stuff. What does that really mean? It means better radio re range for one. And, and the second thing is that this cover here is very, very robust. Okay. I've actually demoed this product in person. I've been standing, I was standing on the cover for, you know, the five minute spiel and then hand it to the customer. And it's like, Hey, yeah, you know, there's not even a dent in it. How many times have you seen the logic five cover just get completely smashed up in an LTL or small parcel, or even on an install, you bang it. Now you got a customer looking for a new cover, another return trip, all that. Now, this is a very robust cover. It's been tested. I've seen videos of this thing actually getting ran over by a, a, a half ton pickup and coming out the other side unscathed. So be uh, just know that it's a, uh, know that it's a very robust uh, plastic cover. Again, the chassis is metal. Um, 
and uh, it's been tested, impact tested, all that kind of good stuff. So on this next one, we have the new wall control. This is really different. Um, you know, not only do you have a digital display, which is common in some commercial door operators, but now it's on the floor. You've got a multi-line, easy to read display the, for, for not only for setting limits and programming remotes and connecting to Wi-Fi and speed and all that kind of stuff. But now you can actually talk to your customer when they're troubleshooting it. And it's actually going to say, you know, eyes blocked. It's going to say edge actuated. Um, it's going to say, you know, the interlock for the hoist is engaged. So you have a, a, a real time, easy to read screen instead of having to count nine MAS lights and, and flip through the manual and, and figure out what that is and what it correlates or, or whatnot. It's going to say what it is right, right there. Um, the, the, uh, buttons of themselves have been tested to over 200,000 actuations. Uh, so it, they are designed with some very good resilience. Um, and they've really thought about how they design the, the box for retrofit. Um, how many times did you have a PBS three that you wanted to mount to a single gang? Now it's there. So if you wanted to, to you know, have the electricians do their, their, their box, now you got two nice screws that'll mount right into that, um, you know, the, the new work box. You have a wire wrap for excess. You also have EMT conduit holes for half inch. Um, they are in the same spacing as a PBS3. So if you're going to pull off an L5 or an L4 with a PBS3, you should be able to very easily put this uh, console, um, you know, push button station in its place. It is bigger. Um, but it, it, it has a lot of features in it. If you want to use a three button station, like let's say that you want the, uh, the 02406 or 02403 from LiftMaster, which is the big cast iron heavy duty one, you are fully able to still hook that up to the system. This new wall control is required for installation and service. So it should be somewhere it should on be the site. All right. So talked about the fall codes. We talked about all that kind of good stuff. Uh, we'll go ahead and move on to the next feature of hardware that they have uh, come up with, and that is the battery backup. So you can see here on the, that is the DC seven amp hour battery backup kit. Um, it comes with uh, two seven amp hour batteries, the harnesses, the tray, everything to be able to mount. It mounts onto the side of the operator. Um, there's already some pre-drilled holes um, to be able to make it install quick and easy. It plugs right into the board and you're ready to rock and roll with it. You know, and it's not just for the power emergencies. Obviously, that's important. You know, if you have a warehouse door where time is money and we all know that facility manager that, you know, has the stopwatch and knows that, you know, if that door didn't run for 10 minutes, they just lost $10,000 or all those kinds of stories that you hear. And, and you know that it's important to be able to open a door. Snow's coming in. You need to be able to close the door. Um, so this battery backup is really good for emergencies. It is standard as a feature for the J model JDC. Um, it is uh, it is required for the functionality and a power failure in order to work, um, as there is uh, currently no SAS chain on that operator. They are uh, in works of developing that um, add-on or adding it to the model, but as of right now, there's no SAS chain or disconnect for the JDC model. It is optional for the TDC and JHDC models. Okay, so it, it does not come with it by default for those two. Uh, product lines, but it is definitely an option and an easy installed one. And, and they've tested this thing, you know, and, and you can go into a perfect condition, light pan door, you're going to get a lot of cycles out of one of these. You're going to get, you know, well over a hundred. They, they, they tested over to 180. Worst case scenario, you got some 700 pound nasty rollers um, type of door you're going to get at least 20. And that's what I would, you know, make sure that we have the expectation for your customers, for the end users. You're going to get at least 20 cycles out of this uh, battery backup system. More than likely, they're going to get a heck of a lot more. Um, so I'll tell you, I could, I could really geek out on this page for a really long time. I want to go over it because it gives some of the features, some of the design insights, some of the voice of customer, and, and really into a well-developed, uh, new control board. This is the same control board for all the different line. Uh, so you don't have to stock, you know, three different boards or, or any of that kind of stuff as far as the main control board. They've color coded everything to make it really easy 
to visually see the difference and to be able to troubleshoot on the phone. Uh, we call into control. We'll be able to say, hey, yeah, the monitor is yellow, just like with the gate operators. Um, you have your inputs, all that kind of stuff. Really well-designed board. Okay. Uh, so you can see on the, the left-hand side with the orange, you do have a one amp 24 volt DC. You don't have to worry about installing a, a 40 VA kit if you added two light curtains and a red green light. Now you should be able to drive that all off of the board. Um, there is a switched one, which basically means while the operator is running, and there is one that's just always on. You know, the always on is for your, uh, maybe if you want to hook up an external microwave sensor, if, if you want to hook up, uh, you know, some, some sort of exit device, something like that, you will obviously want to have it on. If you're, you know, looking at maybe why only running maybe horn type control or something like that, you would look for that switch terminal. You still have your interlock, as you can see with that jumper in there. So if you needed to tie into Sally ports, if you're trying to tie into to dock levelers or something like that, and make sure that the, the door doesn't move until you have a, a proper limit on a, um, you know, on the, the leveler or, or something like that, or on the other door, you have that full integration still there. Programmable inputs. This is something new and, and kind of a, a game changer in my mind. So now you have the ability to go into the programming via the smart wall control and actually put in those, uh, you know, those mid stops, those timer defeats and, and, and wire in those single button or those key switches that only do that particular function. Uh, the other thing that it does have is the i5 connection ability. So if you're familiar with the DDO 8900W, you, you know that that is uh, designed for warehousing facilities. It has the ability to tie into truck restraints, uh, truck sensors, those kinds of uh, those kinds of um, you know useful data collection in the warehouse. If you're interested in the i5, by all means, reach out. I'm not going to cover it too deeply in this uh, presentation, only because it can be a presentation all on its own. Uh, the next thing, you still have your single button control, so open and close, all that kind of good stuff. If you want to tie in uh, maybe an external receiver set or something legacy that needs that SBC, it is still there. Uh, something new to commercial door operators, you know, if you're familiar with the 8500W, the old uh, residential jack shaft, you know that it came with a, uh, a CTM, the cable tension monitor. This is optional. You don't have to have it. But if you have a standard lift installation and you do want to put a JDC or JHDC on there, you can monitor for cable slack using that. They do come left-handed and right-handed. Um, we're, we're, we'll be stocking those in many of the locations. So if, you, if that's something that is interesting to you, you do have the option of handing, having it on the, uh, the operator. Uh, as I mentioned before, three monitored inputs. So without a CPS3 card, without any of that, you can put on two CPSUs and a light curtain. You can put on a, uh, uh, the old uh, CPS MEI or the CPS EI if you were doing something legacy. Um, you, can, you can tire those into those yellow ones. And again, we have the two-wire wire, two wire non-polarity sensitive uh, uh, wall control wires there. I want to show right here, we got a couple of terminals on the board. So, you know, to be able to hook up your battery, that's where the harness goes. And if you look here, this is something that's uh, really new. And, and that is the expansion port. This is where we're going to put those daughter boards. So there's only two daughter boards um, that we really need to worry about. I'll go into those in the accessory section of this presentation, but know that it's on there. It's very similar to if you've dealt with the CSL or any of the LiftMaster gate operators, you're familiar with like an expansion port. They, they work very similar in that you can daisy chain them. So we got a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of information in here. And uh, if there's any you know questions at the presentation, uh, please let me know. But, you know, you got onboard replaceable fuses. You've got some power, um, you know, surge uh, connection stuff on there. You've got external antennas, uh, connections on here. So there's a there's a lot of really good stuff that they thought about. Um, on this uh, next slide, I want to talk a little bit about what the Wi-Fi chip enables. And, and I've had a presentation before on MyQ Facility Diagnostics and MyQ Smart Facility Access. We've We've had it before and, you know, it was uh, well-received. 
it is also very new out to the market. They've, they've developed a lot of, um, you know, finer details. They, they've made it a lot more robust. And so if you're on the fence of trying MyQ facility diagnostics or the facility access, I would highly encourage you to do so. There's a lot of benefits. There's a lot of features. And like I mentioned before, you're going to get three free months by using a promo code that I, I'll, I'll share at the end of this, uh, at the, after this presentation. Um, just to kind of go over it a little bit, once you connect it to Wi-Fi, once you get set up into it, you're going to be able to get maintenance and diagnostic information. You can even get, you know, email notifications. You can get text messages if uh, out of it as well. Um, you know, and what's really nice about this diagnostic is let's say that, you know, your warehouse door had a had an issue. Uh, you know, over the night or in the, you know, graveyard shift or something like that, you can have that email in the morning, you can reach out and be proactive to your customer, call the facility manager and say, Hey, I noticed that you had a photo eye out of alignment issue this morning or last night. Do we need to make a service call or uh, there's an excessive force? Did your springs break or anything like that? And you can be proactive, make sure that you get the service call call them and, you know, and, and discuss the, the issue. Oh, no, we figured it out. Or yes, we do need to actually have a service, uh, a service schedule. So know that that the diagnostics is really handy. They also have cycle counts in there. Um, so you can be able to tell whether or not, you know, door one is moving, uh, you know, several thousand more times per quarter than door number five. Maybe I need to do more PMs on door number one. So you can get some really good useful information out of that. There's another side of it that is called the MyQ Smart Facility Access. So they're, they're really kind of two different separate or two different uh, platforms, but uh, they, they connect to it in the same way via Wi-Fi. So for the facility access, you have the ability now to have programmable remotes directly to the operator, just like if you are familiar with like a passport wig and receiver, you have the ability to actually program remotes in there and um, through the facility access to where now you know that, you know, John Smith has remote A, Ms. Smith has remote B, whatnot, and you can take and remove people, set access levels, all that kind of good stuff from, from the uh, facility access site. Really beneficial, not only in warehouse situations where there, you know, you got a stopwatch and you want to know exactly how long a, a truck is there, but in automotive, you know, it, some of these service bay doors, they, they move well over a hundred times, if not, you know, more a day and being able to know cycle counts, being able to know when there's, you know, unac unauthorized access, um, being able to know if there's, you know, issues ahead of time is really important. And the same thing with firehouse. Uh, think of it, you know, these are need 100% uptime. And if you know that there's an issue or something popping up on the diagnostic or that they're getting closer to their, you know, 20,000 cycle springs or something like that, you can be out there proactively. Um, so there's a lot of really good information that I encourage you to try it. Use the free trial that's going to be coming with the operators and, and, you know, use that to your benefit with your customers. Um, has it been tested? There, there's no doubt about it. Um, LiftMaster has put a lot of time and effort into testing these units. So, you know, where some manufacturers in the past have uh, ran to production and, and you know, felt like the, uh, the dealer was the, the beta tester, or the alpha tester, they've really put a lot of time in there. And, and I, I can't impress that to you enough. Um, you know, they have over 6 million cycles in, in to be able to test the drive chain, um, the, the chassis itself to be able to make sure that, you know, paint isn't chipping off, all that kind of stuff. The enclosures, the buttons, like I mentioned, with, uh, you know, a couple hundred thousand actuations on each one of them. Um, they've been, you know, onslaught of how cold can it get, how hot can it get, humidity, all those kinds of tests have been done there at the LiftMaster site and, you know, and able to get the, the UL ratings and, and all that kind of stuff. They've also done a lot for the, uh, the surge protection, you know, and let's be honest on, on Logic 5, you know, there's a lot of, there was some brownout stuff. There was some um, things that didn't exactly um, correlate to 100% uptime with incoming voltages. So they, they put a lot of time into surge protection, into static discharges, under voltage, over voltage, and they've really put a lot of time into there. Um, just to put everybody a little bit at ease, and I know there's some questions coming into the chat. Um, I will get to those in just a moment where I almost had a stopping point and then we'll, we'll move forward. 
<clears throat> so as far as regulatory info, it's got what you're looking for. It's got the UL rating on it. It's got the, the Wi-Fi alliance, um, you know, the Bluetooth uh, compliance, all that kind of stuff is built into there. So that they really have, you know, it, it's ready for market is what, is what I want to get at from this slide. So I know that there's some questions. Um, let's see here. If you want, Lewis, I can monitor that for you. Okay. Uh, so there, there is some questions. If you're going to cover anything coming up, um, just let me know. But are the operators, Tom asked, are the operators available in three phase? I believe that's By, for sure. So yeah, I'm going to go over that a little bit in a uh, in a moment. But there is definitely three phase. Um, there, they are three phase compatible, and uh, and I'll go into voltages and all that. I said I see another question: Is there a break on all operators? Um, no. So by moving to the DC motor, they have the ability to use the braking as part of the motor. So in the 700 pound and the 1200 pound series, which I'll go over in a little bit, the brake is not going to be on there anymore. The 2200 pound, which is the one and a horse, one and a half horsepower that I'll briefly touch on, that's going to be released in August. That one will have an actual brake on it. And, um, you know, the B2, C2, uh, FTST, all those, um, you know, different programming methods, I believe Cheyenne asked, um, they are still available. They are programmable through the, the wall console. So if you want a C2 or, or constant pressure, or if you need to override a, uh, a photo wire or something like that, temporarily, you still have that option to be able to do that with the wall console. Um, I think that I think that catches us up on the question. So we'll go was, ahead and yes. yeah, I, I said one question that came to me direct. Are there inputs for non-monitored safety devices? Um, at, so yes, you, you you do have the inputs. You got to wire them in a little bit more. I'll get some information on that as far as uh, where it goes to the board. Um, but being able to tie in old you know edge type stuff. Um, you, you will be able to do that. And Lewis, Lewis I got to add a little bit of color there, right? Is, you know, could we tie a non-monitored safety device in to get the effect or an ad? That's great. It wouldn't meet you well at that point though, correct? That That is, that is correct. Uh, you're going to, in order to get a B2 momentary contact, you are going to need a monitor. It comes with a CPSU. Um, so you'll, you'll be able to tie that in and, and out of the box, be able to get to B2 mode if you want to, um, um, yeah. So as a uh, tracing the chat, put it on there, you can tie them into those programmable inputs. Um, yeah. So if, if you need to get, you know, momentary, you're going to have to use the monitored. You can definitely add the non-monitored onto there. All right. Um, so. I believe uh, I see that um, Tracy is on here. The, um, she is very involved with the um, with LiftMaster in the production of Maxim, and has been uh, a better word or lack of a better word. It's uh, her baby, her project that she's been working on. So some of those questions, um, I know she's answering in the chat as well. I'm going to go ahead and move on to the uh, the how to order guide um, from Controlled Products. You know, this is new. This is a um, you know, a, a brand new system. There's questions. There's no doubt about it. There's going to be some differences. You're going to have to learn the the ins and outs of how to ask those questions, how to get them from your tech, and, and make sure that we're you know moving forward to the new line. So I want you to be able to get the questions for the for the first time. Uh, I want you to be able to um, you know not have to do this back and forth thing. So I've developed some resources. And I'll go over in the next slides of how to use those resources and where they're coming from. Again, place orders online, email, person. If you have a sales rep that you're texting with, if you have any of those, um, they're, they're definitely going to be able to, um, you know, order in the same path. So everything's live on our website now. Everything's live in our system now. Um, there is some... Uh, battery backup. So one of the things that, you know, obviously makes this unit different is the ability to be able to put a BBU onto the operators. Any orders placed in our system before February 29th will get a free DC seven amp hour kit. Uh, so just know that that is currently running as a promotion and I hope everybody can take advantage of it. 
So I want to do a quick refresher. I know there's a lot of people on this call right now, and some of there's probably some different levels of knowledge. And I just want to make sure that we're on the same page here. So there, you know, there's a, a few different styles of doors that are, that are that are out there on the market. You have standard lift, we have high lift, vertical lift, rolling steel or grills, and then sliding doors. Um, you know, I want to talk about sliding doors. Those are going to stay in the Logic 5 uh, product line for now. And, and so we're not going to really discuss those as far as ordering guides or anything like that. Trolley or draw bars, standard lift. You know, obviously there's a lot of people out there that are putting uh, jack shaft style uh, operators onto standard lift these days. People want the head or want the, the space above to be clean. They've got engine lifts or hoists or whatever in the way, and they need to be able to put a side mount on there. For all intents and purposes, I'm always going to recommend that a trolley draw bar goes onto a standard lift. Um, obviously, there's cable uh, keepers, there's push down springs, there's cable tension monitors to help alleviate that possibility of a cable dumping off of a drum. Um, but let's let's recommend you know what we know is going to work well. So on the high lift, vertical lift, and rolling steel and grills, this is where we're going to be. You know, in our previously would be a a uh, J or an H or a GH or JD um, or any of these other kind of configurations with a rotational driven jack shaft. Yeah, um, so just as a as a quick refresher, I also want to talk about the old models for just a second. You know, we can't move forward without looking back for just a moment. And and so we have the the old nomenclature would start off with what the model type was. So if it was a trolley, a jack shaft, a gear reduced hoist, or you know, regular hoist. Um, that'd be that prefix on there. The next two were a, were a horsepower indicator. So whether or not it was, uh, if it was five, it was half horsepower. If it was seven, five, it was three quarter. Um, if it was one, oh, it was a one horsepower. Um, so, you know, that's kind of going, that's going to be going away on the next line. So just to kind of know where we were, the next thing that was indicated was a uh, single phase, three phase, or if it had a uh, 575 for our neighbors up to the North. Um, you know, and this was a dual, you know, industry first where you could, you know, select the different voltages, high and low, right there at the control board, single phase or three phase. It made it really easy to, to do that. And um, there's going to be a little bit of a change with, with how we go moving forward. Next one was L5 or maybe it was a U if it was a medium duty. Um, and that was just the logic version, what was in the operators, uh, you know, the board set and everything like that. And then the uh, the position for the handing. So um, if it was a hoist operator, we would need to know where the hand chain was. Again, gear reduced hoist, they could be field selectable. So it was um, a little bit different. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is the old way of ordering sprockets, because that is, it's going to be different. And, and I want to be full forward with that that it is different there is some considerations that we need to have with it so the old way of sprockets from cpsg was we would ask you if it was rolling steel or if it was sectional and we would ask you if it was one inch or inch and a quarter um, we're still going to be asking those questions um, in a in a certain way um, but there's gonna be a little bit of a difference on the next thing we want to do is uh, on the duty cycle. Um, so these are actually the new duty cycles. I don't want to confuse anyone with the old stuff. Um, so 90 per day or 150 per day is going to be the standard duty or the extended duty. And just as, as reference for, for information. Um, so here's the new rubric and, and I want people to kind of understand what, what's going on here. I'm going to dive into this in the next slides in some more detail, uh, just so that we know what we're looking at. So the first thing that we're going to look at is the first three or four letters of the, of the product. Uh, JDC is going to be the next gen jack shaft. Again, this is battery backup as a feature and uh, no hand chain. Um, the next model is going to be the JHDC. And this is going to be the hoisted side. Remember, uh, one of the new features is handing is field selectable. So you don't have to worry about if it was right hand or left hand or any of that anymore. It's very easy. It's four bolts, pull off a, a piece, turn it around, and, and you're ready to rock and roll with a, with a left hand uh, hand chain. I will also say that it's kind of in the middle. Um, so you might not even need to move it at all unless maybe it's a rolling steel. Uh, the next thing, um, next one is the TDC, which is going to be replacing the, the old T model, so the trolley next gen. 
Um, so know that the uh, those are basically our three product line um, uh, starting. The next, uh, the next couple letter or a couple numbers or single letter is going to be seven, twelve, or twenty-two. This roughly correlates to half horse, three quarter, or one horsepower. Okay, um, the twenty-two also encompasses the one and a half horsepower. But for all intents and purposes, what we're really asking now is what's the weight of the door. So a 700 pound door is going to get the seven model. The 1200 pound door is going to get the 12 model. The 2200 pound model is going to get the 22. You go over some launch dates really quick. The seven series has been released. Um, they are starting to show up in CPSG branches at this time. The, the 1200 model is uh, going to be released in the first week of February. And the 2200 model is going to be released in August of this year. So, um, we, uh, we, you know, just as far as that, the next thing that we want to talk about is whether it's a standard duty or it's extended duty. Again, we're looking for either 90 cycles or 150 cycles. Um, one of the nice features is, is on the, the mods and stuff like that, that no more, there's no high cycle mods or bearing mods or anything like that. You're just going to go with the extended duty to be able to get that feature set. Here's the next thing. And this is where there's potential for some confusion. And I want to try to make this really clear. And I'm going to say it a few different times. So 120, 240 single phase or 243 phase is all going to be underneath the designator as one. Um, again, the 243 phase is not considered a three phase or four series operator anymore. Um, they've done some trickery and some design, not really trickery, but they've done some design and engineering on the uh, power board interface for the, the one designated operator that's going to enable it to take 120 or 240 um, uh, single or three phase and not 240. And then the designator four is just going to equate to your 480 voltage supply, 460 operator kind of style. Um, that's where the kicker comes in. If it's three phase, and it's 240, you got to remember to go to one. Um, and if it's, uh, you know, if it's 208 voltage, which I'll talk about in a little bit, single or three phase, you need to use an accessory transformer. So as long as it's a common 120 or 240, you know that you're going to need a one. If it's a 480, you know you're going to need a four. Uh, the rest of them are going to end in BMC, which is basically means that it's battery capable or has it on board. And then the MC is designation for the security 2.0 radio set. Um, there is also some uh, some suffix that can be in there that indicates for the NEMA 4, um, as that's not going to be released until um, uh, early 2025. I didn't really want to um, put it on here for to add any additional confusion as we launch this. Uh, so let's talk about the JDC, JHDC, and TDC just for a second. Um, again, all operators by standard are going to come with the CPSU in the box. If you, uh, if you want to talk about um, upgrading, maybe you want the CPS Open 4 or it's a fire station, they want to do the CPS UN4s because they want some, you know, some NEMA 4 rated eyes, add that as an accessory. And then we can credit you back as far as controlled products if you don't want to take that CPSU into your stock. So that'd have to be a second transaction. Really, it's just to help us reduce SKUs. It's help us to help you more efficiently. And so that's why that change was done. Um, again, jack shafts have the battery backup as a as a feature, um, and it's going to operate the door by rotational force. The next model is the JHDC, and that's got the hoist on it. It has the manual chain. It's going to come with 25 feet of hand chain in it, so plan accordingly. If you have a high lifted door, if you have a um, if you have a high lifted door, or if you have a vertical lift door that's way up there. Make sure that you include hand chain. It is the same hand chain as before. Uh, so if you have maybe you got barrels or bags or leftover hand chain from other projects, you can reuse that and tie it into the new chain. Uh, same thing with the hash chain or the sash chain. If you uh, need to add that to an operator, you can you can do so. Um, so the next thing that we uh, is on the TDC. Um, this is just you know the next generation trolley is going to use a carriage to slide along a fixed path, battery backup capable. So again, 7, 12, or 22 is that next uh, designator. Um, 700 pounds, 1,200 pounds, 2,200 pounds. Think half horsepower, think three-quarter horsepower, think one or one and a half. It's really important that we know the weight now. And, um, you know, to be able to help spec the right operator, make sure that you're getting the right thing. And 
Uh, there's also, um, you know, if it's a rolling steel, we do want to know if it's insulated or non-insulated. I've got that on the questionnaire that I'll share in a little bit. Next thing is that duty cycle, just to reiterate it again. 90 cycles per day, we're thinking the old J, we're thinking the H, we're thinking the T, any of those non-gear reduced operators. And then the extended duties, we're thinking high cycle mods, we're thinking anything with a GH or a GT gear reduced. That's really where we're, we're going into this. Um, 20 cycles per hour on the standard duty, uh, 30 cycles per hour on the extended duty. Um, if you're moving a door 30, uh, 30 times an hour, you might as well call it a uh, call it continuous duty um, on that. So the uh, the next thing that we're going to talk about, and like I said, I think there was a question on two weight voltage. I'll cover that on the slide again. Um, all right. So 120, 240 single and three phase, 483 phase. That's where our designators happen in the model. If it's 208, you need an accessory transformer. Um, and then that will step it down to the, the one model um, designator. So again, if you got 208 single, if you got 283 phase, add on the accessory transformer. Um, I'll have that part number here in just a moment for you. And, and that's going to enable you to tie it into the uh, the one designator operator. You can see the difference in the in the boards and how they're set up. This is where the incoming power can be. Um, I'll, I'll show you. You can see how they've got the push terminals on here. You know, you don't have to worry about uh, screws falling out of the L12 terminals anymore. There is a, uh, a pushover style clip, a uh, very vibration resistant. Um, they're, you know, uh, highly rated and for you know continuous duty, they're, they're good clips. So you can see here that they kept the plug style change between the 120 and the 240. On the 480, you only have this. You don't have any plug change uh, ability on it. So you know, at least an electrician should not be able to try to hook up 233 phase to this thing and uh, and blow it up because it's going to say 480 on it and they should really figure it. They should hopefully figure that out. Um, if you do have three phase, obviously you're probably asking the leg one, two, and three. There is no leg three uh, terminal anymore on either of these. You're going to cap that off and you're not going to use it. Just make sure that it's securely it's marked live, whatnot with the cap, uh, with a cap on it. That way it's uh, safe for the next person installing. Um, I'm going to go pretty quick through this one as it's a uh, it's, you know, kind of regurgitated, but I want to just kind of show you some different explanations. So like on our third one, you know, we've got the uh, the trolley operator. It's a 12. It's got the extended duty. It's for 40 VAC. And it's battery cap ups, battery backup. So TDC 12 X for BMC um, second line there. You can see JHDC seven um, S for BMC. Basically, we're just saying it's a 700 pound series, 90 cycles per day, um, you know, 480. I will make a note that the 7 series does not come in extended. And the 2200 series, when it comes out in August, will not come in a standard. So just, uh, just so that everybody kind of understands that. Um, here's a conversion sheet. I think Tracy had mentioned it in the chat. Um, this is what uh, LiftMaster has provided. It's a good reference sheet that shows uh, broken down by half or uh, by horsepower what it's converting to. And um, I went from the old model here to the new model here. So if you have like a T75, you're going to be looking for the TDC 12S. Um, I will make a note that on the uh, the J75, um, there's not really a direct replacement for that one. Um, you're going to be looking at going to the, um, you know, to the uh, 1200 series with a hand chain at that point. Like I mentioned, the seven series does not come in, uh, uh, or the, yeah, anyway. So let's go on to the next one. This is another sheet that's provided by LiftMaster. Um, I'm not a huge fan of this sheet, but it does have some pretty good information for the technically minded person. Um, it has the, uh, the different sprockets compared to drums. So we're talking about the JDC, we're talking about the JHDC here. And, and it has the, you know, all the different drums, DNS drums that are listed here on this column compared to what the sprockets were. I don't expect everybody um, to know different drums. And so I've created some additional resources that should help to kind of make the missing piece for the translation. Um, these are on the rolling steel as well. You're able to uh, 
you know, see the different sprocket teeth. Again, we want to make sure that the sprocket teeth to the on the, the door itself, the door torsion line, going to the output of the operator is matched well. We're, we're looking to aim at almost 12 sec or 12 inches per second here. And so we want to, you know, rely on some lift master engineering and, and make sure that we um, we get that going. What I'll tell you is this is the sheet that I, or the kind of the, the diagram that I think makes a lot more sense, at least to my mind, to the uh, to the uninitiated, maybe the new office staff, maybe the first year tech that doesn't, can't rattle off that a 5250, uh, 216 is SL18 or, or whatnot on the drum sizes. If I use this chart, I know that a 700 series operator for a sectional door is going to be a 16 tooth sprocket. Same style, 1200 series operator is going to be a 22 tooth sprocket. We still need to know the bore size so that we can match up to one inch or inch and a quarter. Uh, we still need to know the the keyway. Um, we still need to know the you know the weight of the door now. You know the type of door if it's rolling steel, if it's insulated or not insulated. And really, the only reason we want to know the uh, the the insulated versus not insulated is so that we can get to the right sprocket on this question here. And this question here, if it's, uh, you know, if it's um, under 1800 pounds on the 2200 series, we can get by with the 22, I'm sorry, the 72 tooth. And if it's over 22, we can go to there. Um, so I'll have this on a reference sheet. Don't worry about making notes on it at the moment. Uh, but I did want to, you know, show this sheet that probably makes a lot more sense than, than this sheet in my mind. So how does it mount? There are some differences here and, and some things that for retrofit applications, that's going to be important. All right. Everybody's got it on their truck. And that's perforated punch angle. And nobody could really use it before easily to mount on the old models. Well, now you can. So the, the center spacing on these key slots is now seven inches exactly, which will line up very well with one inch perforated, one inch space perforated punch angle. Uh, allow you to make brackets, allow you to make standoffs off of purlings or trusses or whatever is going on in your building. Um, just know that if you're mounting it to a wall, you're going to need new anchors um, or, or some way to be able to adapt from an old spacing of roughly, you know, seven and a half, a little bit more um, on the old models there. So just know that that is different. The other difference is, is you are used to, like, you know, the, the angle mount or the easy brackets and all those kinds of things. This is the new front of hood mount. Um, yeah, this is the new front of hood mount that's going to be an accessory item. So if you have a rolling steel that you want a front of hood, this is what you're going to be looking at adding as an accessory item. Um, I want to briefly touch on the new chain packs for the TDC. So you're, you're used to the brown and you know clear boxes with the 1958 or the 1941 model chain packs. They are going to be shorter than what we need for the TDC. And the reason for that is because of how the bolt pattern to the, the existing rail. So you get to use the existing angle iron, um, you know, and all that in the end bracket and all that kind of stuff for the, um, the header bracket. But because of how the offset is a further distance between the sprockets and where it attaches to the rail. So this is a shorter distance. This is a longer distance. Now the, uh, the chains are about 16 inches longer. And so what this means is make sure that if you're doing a retrofit and you don't want to have to mess with, you know, uh, adding link to chain, you need to make sure that you're getting the new chain pack, even if you're keeping the old rails. So just know that if you need, let's say in a pinch, we need to use some uh, other chain. You can always go the chain size higher of the old style. So let's say it was a 12 foot door. You can get the chain pack for a 14 foot and you're able to use a chain breaker, make it a little bit shorter and, um, and it'll, it'll line up on that new operator. All right, let's talk about some accessories. I know we're getting close to the top of the hour. I've only got a few more slides. I appreciate everybody staying on with me so far. And I really uh, hope that this is being used for you. But accessories. All right, so these are really the, the two daughter boards and the one accessory um, expansion port device that you're going to be looking for. Auxiliary relay board is going to be a really important one. Okay. Um, this is for horns. This is for strobes. This is for ox mods, for limit kits. Um, you know, you're, yeah. So um, I was reading the question in the chat. But anyway, so we got the, the horn strobes, auxiliary limit mods, all that kind of stuff, red, green lights. Um, this is what you're going to need. This is going to be a really common accessory. Make sure your techs are asking. Make sure that you're asking if this is going to be needed. Uh, 
Uh, the next one, which is a, um, a really nice feature, is the loop detector bore, the L LPEXP, loop, uh, the uh, loop detector expansion board. This is going to allow you to use the LiftMaster family loop DTLM right there on the on the operator. Both of these daughter boards um, will have the ability to mount on the cover of the operator. So they've got some nice already designed holes. Uh, the mount should make it really easy for the install, make it quick and quick and easy. Again, this is a you know the 208 transformer kit that I was talking about to be able to convert it to down. There is uh, different sizes for different models. So if it's a seven series, 22 series or 12 series, you're going to want to make sure that you get the right one. That way you get the right amperage out and you don't uh, you know under voltage the, the operator. So just know if you have 208, there's some uh, some really special considerations. Uh, again, we have the battery backup kit, red green lights. Um, I could also put on here uh, light curtains um, and all those kinds of accessories. So some more accessories just to kind of reference this. Uh, we talked about all these right here. We talked about the transformer kit. We talked about the front of hood mount. Um, there's also a, another hoist mount adapter plate that will convert from the old GH pattern to a new old pattern. Um, so if you have something that you need to convert, there is a way to do it. Um, all right. So, all right. Now we've got chain tensioners, which, um, there is some, if you've been in any of the beta, the alpha testing, you may have, uh, noted, you know, the shaft output size is a little shorter. And what's really nice about having this new chain tensioner from LiftMaster is it actually mounts the operator. You're taking all the pressure off of the seal of the gearbox for one, and, and it's designed custom fit for the LiftMaster operator. It, it's going to make a real good uh, connection. It's going to be very stiff. It's going to do exactly what it wants it to do. So if you're used to ordering the, the, the 71 dash um, chain tensioners from, uh, from CP, make sure that you're asking for the new chain tensioner if you're doing maximum. Um, over here, these probably look familiar to you if you are in the gate operator space with controlled products. LMTBUL, LMRUL. One thing that I'm really excited about with those two being UL tested, UL tested and approved for Maxim is being able to have a heater on a photo eye. <laughs> you know, it, it's, uh, you know, not only can you add the heater kit themselves to the operators now, um, but you can have a heated photo eye, which is a really nice thing for freezer applications or or something like that that you might be uh, running into issues on with frost buildup or, or something like that. Again, you do have ox trolley mods. Um, so if you were doing a jack shaft and you need to have a slave, um, you know, the, the auxiliary trolley up there because of space savings, you can still do that. Um, same thing with the, uh, the dual version of that and then being able to have the, uh, the dual trolley modification you know, that's still fully compatible with the, the Maxim line. Um, we are almost to the last slide here. And like I said, I appreciate everybody being with me. These are some resources that I've created for our dealer network um, and everybody that's on this call here to really help drive the questions and what we need to know as far as uh, making sure that you get the order right the first time. So a lot of these uh, screenshots that I, I had earlier are on this form. Uh, the back side of it has um, some the questions that the technician can actually fill out on site, a uh, list of the accessories down here. And because uh, the, the sprockets are going to be so integral and in, in knowing what the right keyway is and the bore size and all that kind of stuff, um, I want to make sure that you had a good reference sheet of what actually goes into a sprocket. So these uh, documents I will email out after the, the webinar to everybody on here. And... Um, and make sure that you have that resource for you, your technicians and all. Uh, that is the uh, the presentation. I, I really appreciate everybody's time. Uh, again, my name is Lewis. I am I'm wanting to help you in any way that I can. So if there's some still some some gray areas, some questions, some issues that you may want to talk about, by all means, reach out to me. Um, you know, everybody. Uh, on this, you'll, you'll have my information after the webinar. So I, I really appreciate your business with CP and hope in 2024 that we can bring Maxim uh, into the marketplace and, and uh, you know, hit it off from there. I think, uh, how are we doing on questions, Zach? I think most of these are getting answered. Appreciate uh, Daniel and, and Tracy covering those. Um, 
I had one other question come in uh, privately. It The question was, it looks like the aux output board doesn't quite match the feature of the TLS1 card. Is there, and there may be one less relay. Is that because it's on the main board now or? Uh, um, so it has, uh, let's see if I can get this going. So if you look at the auxiliary relay board, hopefully everybody can see um, zoomed in a little bit. It does have two relays on it um, to be able to tie one for a green light, one to be able to tie for a red light. Um, and depending on how the switches are, you can, you know, make it do a lot of different things. Most of what you're going to be um, looking at is uh, going to be on there. And then as Tracy mentioned in the chat, you know, if you do have a dock leveler and you want a red green light, um, you can, you can put two of those aux reels on there. Um, and, and Tracy might be able to correct me if I'm wrong, but let's say that you wanted to tie in an i5 module. If you had a lot of accessories, um, you can always do that as well and get those feature sets that you're looking for. You could also add some of those features to those programmable inputs. That's also where some of that LMI5 functionality can go as well. So if you have a truck presence sensor, um, you can add it there as well, Lewis. Perfect. Are there any other questions? I think we covered the the car wash mod and the damp environment damp environment mod. Um, are those the same thing? And those are coming down the road. Correct. So anything with a a C prefix car wash, an N four, the NEMA four, or the NEMA four X um, is uh, slated to be put into production in Q one of twenty twenty five. So we we've got it. That's on the roadmap. Uh, you know a good amount of time away from now. Uh, the next, you know, big dates while we're on the subject uh, in February is going to be those 1200 series operators and the, uh, the 2200 series operators will be sometime in August. Um, just to reiterate, uh, two horsepower, three horsepower, gear reduced hoists um, and slide door operators will be staying in the Logic 5 at this point, as well as NEMA 7, uh, if you're dealing with any uh, explosion intrinsically safe operators. Excellent. And for the products that we're talking about today that are standard issue, um, how's inventory looking? Uh, I know that I've seen a lot of shipping lists. I've seen a lot of uh, receipts already happen at Control Products. Uh, I want to say something like uh, maybe a dozen or so branches have units at this point and uh, are ready to start shipping. And if not, they should be right around the corner. So make sure you get those pre-orders in. I'll plug it one more time. Uh, the DC seven amp hour kits are a promotional item until the end of February that you are able to uh, to add on and and get the uh, get the operator with that battery backup full functionality so you can test it out. Awesome. Well, great presentation, Lewis. A uh, lot of lot of material to cover. We'll follow up with the post webinar notes, a recording of the session, those. Uh, supplemental information guides. We'll get those out to you by end of day tomorrow. Uh, follow up with Lewis with any additional questions beyond that. And I would just say this, I mean, anytime there's a new product in the marketplace, there's uh, some level of trepidation and concern about switching. I think the promo is a great opportunity to, you know, get your feet wet with the product and kind of understand all the features and benefits. You know, when we discuss the fact that Hey, it's easier to install. There's more features built in. We've got features that never existed before. Uh, that all sounds great on the front end, but you know, installing a unit and getting it out there and being successful with it is uh, the proof in the pudding. So, uh, I would encourage you all to uh, you know jump in with two feet and and uh, get some out there and and listen to your techs and get the feedback from them, and and we'll of course adjust from there. Thank you, everybody, very much. Um, we'll uh, ask your local brands for pricing. Let's get some of these out in the marketplace and show our end users what the innovations are. So uh, thanks again. Thanks, all.